Hello guys, my name is Marcos Mia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about four of the best dividend ETFs of all time. Dividend investing is a great way to build a large nest egg in the future, as well as have a current stream of income or a future stream of income in retirement. The benefits of dividend investing is it does allow for you to receive some passive income, some good capital appreciation, and lower volatility, which does mean lower risk. Without further ado, in no particular order, we're gonna go one by one on this list with number one being SCHD or Charles Schwab's US Dividend Equity ETF. Now we are on Charles Schwab's website currently and the objective of SCHD is to track as closely as possible the total return of the Dow Jones US 100 index. So a few highlights of this dividend ETF is, is a straightforward low cost dividend ETF. The fund can serve uh, as a part of the core or a complement in a diversified portfolio. So you can have SEHD as your top holding in your portfolio safely with peace of mind. It does track an index focused on quality and sustainability of dividends. So you will get some high quality dividend stocks with great earnings, great potential for future growth in their dividends and share price. The dividend yield is very high, starting at 3.74% at the time of this recording. You do get this higher dividend yield because it does select stocks, like I said, with quality dividends and sustainability of them. It does have a super low expense ratio of 0.6%, super low. And some of its top holdings include PepsiCo, Broadcom, Merck, and Coca-Cola. So you do get some of these high quality, high potential for dividends in the future, as well as now, and a high potential for share price appreciation, as here are some amazing stocks in the top holdings. The number of holdings are 104 stocks. So you are diversified in over 100 stocks, picked by the SEHD fund managers and the top sector is in industrials. It does get a dividend grade of an A plus with a current dividend yield, like I said, of 3.74%. The current dividend growth rate though is 16.63%, which is super high. That's very quality for a dividend stock. The three-year compounded, compounded average growth rate is 13.33%. The five-year is 15.56%. And in the past 10 years, it has grown its dividend at a compounding annual growth rate of 11.72%. So it's super good to see for SHD, and that's why it deserves one of my top picks on this list. It does have a $2.64 trailing 12 months annual payout. So for every share of own you, of the, that you own of SHD, you will get $2.64 in annual dividends. As done 10 years of consecutive dividend growth, and like I said, the five-year compounded annual growth rate is 15.56%. If we look at the dividend growth, we can see in the past 10 years, it has a rapidly grown its dividend from around 90 cents to a currently 2.56, $2.56. So it does have that potential to keep on growing its dividend of over $3 in the future. And we can see the quality of this dividend ETF. As you can see, the dividend growth history has started kind of low at uh, around 12 cents and made its way all the way up to over $2.50. And the yield has kind of increased and decreased over time due to that share price appreciation, as well as the increase in our dividend payments. For the dividend history, we could see it gets an A plus in consecutive years of dividend growth, as well as an A minus in consecutive years of dividend payments, which is super amazing to see in this quality dividend ETF. We can look at the past 10 years, we could see that the dividend being paid out quarterly just keep on increasing over time as, div as the dividends inside of SHD do pay out more to your you as an investor. And if we look at the, the charting, we can look at the price return versus the S&P 500. So we're gonna be taking into account a total return, which does include their dividend payment. So in the past year, SCHD has underperformed the S&P 500 with negative 3.25% returns versus the S&P 500, 7.34%. But if we look at the past three years, SCHD has outperformed the S&P 500 with 53.95% returns versus the S&P 500's 48.74%. And the past five years, uh, SHD has outperformed the S&P 500 once again with over 68.04% returns, and the S&P 500 has only had 67.98% gains. SHD is a great ETF if you want that higher starting dividend yield, and if you want to have dividend growth of higher consecutive dividend payments in the future, as well as high dividend appreciation as well as capital appreciation and your dividend ETF. Now, number two on my list is going to be VYM, which is a Vanguard ETF. 
specifically Vanguard's High Dividend Yield ETF. So it seeks to track the performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index, which measures the investment return of common stocks of companies characterized by high dividend yields. So this does provide a convenient way to track the performance of stocks that are forecasted to have above high average yields. So if you don't want to stock pick on which stock is going to be giving you a high dividend yield, if you want to let a portfolio manager like Vanguard to manage your funds like VYM, if you want a high dividend yield, you can see VYM is a perfect ETF for that. It's also a passively managed ETF, which does mean it does have a hands-off approach, which can be a set it and forget it ETF for investors. We can see the dividend yield is currently at 3.19%, which is a super high dividend yield. Pretty much anything over 3% is going to be a very high dividend yield. The dividend ETFs are quality higher yielders. So it's going to be more peace of mind, set it and forget it. And you can always rely on this ETFs that I'm going to be talking about. The expense ratio, once again, is super low at 0.06%. And some of the top holdings of VYM are ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, and Procter & Gamble. So you are going to get some of these um, kind of higher, higher yielders, a little more defensive companies, but you do get some potential for higher returns over time with VYM. The holdings are a lot, a lot more than SHD, 469 holdings. So you do get a broad amount of stocks that are going to be higher quality, higher yielding stocks for you as an investor. If you're looking for more of a higher dividend yield ETF with a little more or less volatility. The top sector is financials for VYM. So the dividend grade is of course going to be an A plus dividend grade. The current dividend yield is 3.19%. The dividend growth rate in the trailing 12 months is 6.61%. The growth rate in the past three years is wrong, um, but we're going to skip over that and look at the five-year dividend growth rate, compounding annual growth rate, which is 6.61%. And in the past 10 years, it has grown its dividend um, around 7.58%. If you look at the dividend summary, we can see that it does pay $3.31 in annual dividends with a 3.19% dividend yield. In the past five years, it has grown its dividends 6.61% with 12 years of dividend growth. If we look at the dividend growth, we can see in the past 10 years, we can see it's kind of a more steady over time. As you can see, it went from around a 17 cent dividend to what it is now of $3.25. So it has increased it year over year. Uh, to you guys as an investor, if you guys are invested in the VYM. The dividend history, it does get an A plus in consecutive years of dividend growth of 12 years and an A in consecutive years of dividend payments of 15. So this is going to be a super high quality dividend ETF. As you can see the dividend history, uh, it's you know kind of up and down, but it's really steady. It's going to be more of a dividend ETF for you know retirees. If you're kind of closer to your retirement, you want lesser volatility and more of a constant predictable stream of dividend payments, VYM is going to be perfect for that. If we look at the charting versus the S&P 500, we can see that VYM has underperformed the S&P 500 with negative 0.69% gains. So you are pretty much breaking even on your investment in the past year. The S&P 500 has returned 7.34% in the past year. In the past three years though, VYM has kept up with the, the stock market of the S&P 500 with 48% returns, and the S&P 500 has done 48.75% returns. Look at the past five years, we can see VYM kind of trailed the S&P 500 just a little bit with 43.59% gains versus the S&P 500's 67.98% return. So VYM is going to be a ETF for dividend investors. If you kind of want more of a predictable stream of income, it's going to be a lot less volatile than something like uh, other ETFs that are going to be a little bit more on the dividend growth aggressive side. So if you want a higher starting dividend yield and you want a reliable constant stream of dividends, you could look at something like VYM, which is one of the best in the business. Okay, number three on my list is going to be another Vanguard ETF, which is going to be VIG or Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation ETF. We can see that it seeks to track the performance of the S&P 500 U.S. Dividend Growers Index. And it is in a large cap equity, emphasizing stocks with a record of growing their dividends year over year. Now, what I like about large cap equity, it's going to be a lot more reliable with large cap, bigger companies that are going to be having wider moats, a constant stream of revenue, and going to be the big dogs in the stock market. You can see the dividend yield is going to be a lot smaller because this is a dividend grower or dividend growth ETF with 1.94% dividend yield. Now, the hope of this ETF is that in the future, 
the dividend yield will rise a lot more. Years and years go by as these dividend companies do pay out a larger dividend over time. The expense ratio is 0.06%, which is super low. And the top holdings include ExxonMobil, Apple, Microsoft, and United Health. So you are going to be getting some of these higher growth plays that do pay an annual dividend, like something like Apple and Microsoft, as well as United Health. So you are going to get a lot more um, riskier stocks that are going to be um, a lot of potential for share price appreciation more than its annual dividends. But in the future, you can get a lot uh, more capital appreciation on top of consecutive dividend payments are going to be a lot higher. The holdings is a lot at 317 holdings. So you are broadly diversified in many different stocks. And the top sector is going to be technology because the focus of these companies is that these companies do pay a lower dividend yield starting out. And over time, it will increase that dividend yield as they just keep on paying more money, hopefully to you guys as an investor. Their dividend, its dividend scorecard for VIG is an A+. The dividend yield, like I said, is 1.94%. The dividend growth rate in the past trillion 12 months is 6.57%. And its five and its three-year compounding annual growth rate is 13%, which is in the double digits. And in the past five years, the dividend growth rate, uh, compound annual growth rate is 9.87%. And in the past 10, it's 7.82%. So this is going to be a very good dividend appreciation ETF for ETF uh, dividend investors. If you look at its uh, annual paid out, it's going to be $3.03 with a five-year growth rate of 9.87% in dividends, as well as dividend growth in the past nine years consecutively. If you look at the dividend growth, we could see in the past 10 years, it increases dividend pretty much a lot better than VYM because this is a dividend appreciation ETF. And it went from $1.39 to currently that $2.97 um, yields on the data. We can see their dividend growth history, 52 cents, all the way up consecutively to where it was last, $2.97 payout. If you look at this dividend history, we can see it has both an A plus in consecutive years of dividend growth of nine years and an A plus in consecutive years of dividend payments of 16 years. So we can see this dividend, you know, paid dividend a lot more over time, continuing to appreciate dividend with these dividend growers. And if we look at the charting, we can see the total return versus the SP500. We can see that VIG has pretty much kept in line with the SP500 of 7.18% returns versus SP500's 7.34% returns in the past year. And in the past three years, VIG has barely underperformed the SP500 with a 44.92% returns versus the SP500's 48.75% gains. In the past five years, we could see VIG just barely underperformed the SP500, pretty much keeping exactly in line with it, with 67.68% returns versus the SP500's 67.98% gain. So pretty much VIG is going to be that higher tech, higher appreciation of dividends play. If you do have a longer time horizon, I would say anything from 15 to 20 plus years, VIG is going to be a great dividend ETF for people who have a lot larger time horizons for something like VYM or SCHD, which is going to be kind of the higher yielders if you are looking for a higher yield now. But if you aren't looking for a higher yield now and you want to see those dividends do increase in the future with reliable dividend companies and higher share price appreciation, you can look at something like VAG, which is the best in the business for dividend growers. Our number four pick is going to be iShares DGRO, which is one of the best ETFs in dividends. So DGRO is an iShares growth ETF, which seeks to track the investment results of an index composed of U.S. equities with a history of consecutively or co of consistently growing their dividends. So why DGRO? Well, DGRO offers low cost exposure to U.S. stocks focused on dividend growth, and it gives you access to companies with a history of sustained dividend growth and that are broadly diversified across industries. With DGRO, you can use it at the core of your portfolio to seek income, so if you want to have a higher allocation, a high or higher um, top holding of DGRO in your stock portfolio, you totally can do that with DGRO. The dividend yield of DGRO it is 2.41%, which is going to be a very high and healthy dividend yield. The expense ratio is a little bit higher than VYM, VIG, and SCHD, but it's just barely at 0.08%. And the top holdings do include Johnson Johnson, Apple, Microsoft, and JP Morgan. 
And the number of holdings are a lot. It's going to be 448 stocks. So you are broadly diversified in many different holdings. And the top sector is in the healthcare industry. So with EGRO, you do, you do get a lot of healthcare, but you do get some bigger, cool, uh, higher potential for capital appreciation plays and higher dividend plays like Apple, Microsoft, as well as Johnson & Johnson, and also access to over 400 stocks. It does get an A in the dividend grade for its score for its scorecard. Uh, current dividend yield of 2.41%, with a dividend growth rate in the past trillion 12 months of 12.36%. In the past three years, the dividend growth rate, or the compounded annual growth rate, is 7.86%. In the past five years, the dividend growth rate has been 10.32%. And we have no data in the past 10 years because this fund hasn't been in, in inception for longer than 10 years. I believe it's currently around nine. So the dividend summary is it does pay a dollar and 20 cent uh, trillion 12 months annual dividend payout. And the five year growth rate is 10.32% with a dividend growth consecutively for the past eight years. If you look at the dividend growth, we can see a lower starting dividend yield it did grow its dividend quite a bit in the past 10 years. Uh, if you look at the past five, it's probably a better data. It's kind of a lot less compounded annual growth rate, like something like SHD, but you do get some dividend growth in it. It does start with a dividend of 25 cents in 2014, and it has grown it substantially to what it is now of around $1.16 with the last data given. Look at the dividend history. It does get an A plus for consecutive years of dividend growth of eight years and a B plus for consecutive years of dividend payments of eight years. So we can see in the chart, we can see it consistently grows annual dividends over time. And most likely these companies also did increase their share price as they increase its dividend payments, which means it's more profitable and a quality company. We look at the charting for it versus the SP 500. We can see DGRO yield a positive return, but not as much as the SP 500 with 3.05% gains versus the SP 500's 7.34% return. The past three years, it has barely underperformed the S&P 500, but it has kept in track with it with 48.02% returns versus the S&P 500's 48.75% gain. In the past five years, DGRO has had a great return of 61.93% returns versus the S&P 500's 67.98% gain. But if we look at pretty much what DGRO is for, basically, if you want to have a higher dividend payments in the future, we want to have a good dividend yield of over two, almost two and a half percent, basically, with dividend growth in it. You can have the core of your portfolio. DGRO is going to be a great dividend ETF play if you want to diversify in the ETFs for dividends that you invest in. So these are my four best dividend ETFs of all time that I believe are going to be some of the best for the future, for now, and for long-term investors. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like because this cute puppy did. And comment down, but down below an ETF that you are investing in, maybe one on this list that you think is the best or an ETF that you believe should belong on this list.